Teamfight Tactics have just released a new set called Remix Rumble. And this time I will show you how to actually play the game and get good at it. I'm a top 1% player for multiple sets and I have made this guide specially for you who are new to the game or a returning player after a break. So stick around and learn how to play the game that millions of others gamers enjoy. TFT is also battler, meaning that the units will do all the fighting themselves. And what we need to do is to craft a combined team that is better than everyone else. We do this by picking a carry unit, supporting and tank units that can help out the carry unit, and at the same time choose units that have the same synergy to buff up the carry even more and the overall team. To explain how to do all of this, let's start off by going over the game and explain what to do at every single point. We start off the game by choosing one out of three portals. Each portal represents a feature that will change the overall game just a little bit. That could be everyone is getting a little bit more health, you get some gold when you build items, or something completely different. These portals change every time the game starts and are part of why every game you play is unique from the next one. There's no guarantee that the portal you choose will be the one that plays out. As long as just one other player is standing on one of the portals, there is a chance of a different outcome. But the more players that stand on the same portal, the bigger the chance. If you can remember what the portal have been chosen when you're playing the game, you can always just right click on the speaker to see what have changed. After the game has chosen a portal, we come to stage 1. Here we will gain ourselves a random unit, and you will be faced with 3 rounds of player versus environments, also called PvE. In these 3 rounds, you will kill units that drops what we call orbs that contain gold, item components, or units. You do also have a small chance of getting more rare loot from the orbs, like spatula, duplicators, and tome of trade. After winning the first round of PvE, your shop will open and give you the option to buy 5 units. The units can cost 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 gold by default, depending on how powerful they are. At this point you are only level 2 and that means you have a 100% chance of getting 1 cost units. The percent will start spilling up when you get up in levels, giving you a bigger chance of finding more costly units but also more powerful units. You will buy 3 of the same units, it will be upgraded to one stronger version called a 2 star unit. Do we get 3 of these 2 star units? It will be upgraded to a 3 star unit. For each upgrade, the unit's stats and ability will be way stronger. Every unit have what we call traits, and when you play more units from the same trait, your units from that trait will receive a bonus, and sometimes the bonus will even benefit the whole team. This will happen as long as the trait is active. Traits can make your team more offensive, defensive, or can support your team in different ways. There's many different traits, and some is combined more naturally than others. If you're completely new, two comps that I recommend you could try out is Jinx, where you play around with Punk, Guardian, and Rapid Fire. Here you're looking for six Guardians or four Guardians. You will also always have at least two Punks, that is Jinx and Pantheon, and you will always have at least two Rapid Fire. In this case, we have picked Jinx, who is a headliner with Rapid Fire, but more on that later. Another one you can try out is playing around Set, and Set's two trait is Crowd Diver and EDM. To buff up Set the most possible, we are playing around these two traits. But there is many different ways that you can play comps. But one thing you almost always will do is to pick a carry that will be a headliner. In Set 10, we have what we call headliner units. But it is something that we have seen before in the past. In Set 4, it was called a chosen unit. You as a player will be offered a headliner champion in this shop and that will cost 3 times its normal cost. Doing 2, it's already upgraded to a 2 star. The unique thing with headliner units is that they have combined special bonus unique to them. If the unit is a castle unit like Annie, they could gain ability power. If the unit is more tanky like Cassante, the bonus could be that they have more health. Headliner buffs could also be that the ability gets stronger. They will appear in the shop every time you don't have one, and on every 4 shop if you do have one. And you can only have one at a time, so if you want a new one, you have to sell the one that you already have. Headliner units present themselves in the shop just like every other unit. When you level up, you will have a bigger chance of seeing higher cost units that are headliners. 
but they do have a different percent split from normal units that you find in the shop. You can check what chances you have by holding your mouse over the stage mark just above the most right unit in your shop. One cost headliner units will most likely be in your shop at level 2, 3 and 4 but can also come at level 5. Two cost headliners will mostly come at level 5 and 6 but can also be there as early as level 4 and as late at level 7. The free cost can be seen already at level 6 but mostly comes at level 7 and 8. And when you get to level 8 you will start seeing the 4 cost units. If you want to see 5 cost headliners you need to get to level 9. The last thing worth mentioning about headliner units is that they have 1 extra points in one of their traits. In the start of the game you will most likely look for units that you can upgrade to 2 star or units that share the same trait. You can also choose to buy headliner units that gonna be your carry or just one that holds your items for later. In the most cases Units we buy early is to build up the foundation of our comp in the later game or just to avoid losing too much health when we start playing versus other players. But other than getting 2 star units and traits active, we also want some sort of carry and some sort of frontline. If you have no idea what units you should play or what comp you want to play later, you might want to consider subscribing and stay tuned for future guides on early game, the strongest openers and even full guides on single comps. If you have played League of Legends before, you will have a good idea of what units fits in what role. As in League, Annie and Lux is ability casters and units like Tarek and Tom Kench is tanky melee units. So try to have units that are hard to kill in the front line and some units that are more squishy but do more damage further back. But even if you haven't played League before, after a few games you will start having a good idea of what units fits in what role. Alright, back to the game. After the three first PvE rounds, you will get to stage 2 where you have to choose your first augment. Augments is a unique effect that only benefits your team and can be anything from buffing your team, giving you more gold, experience or items. It could be additional point in a trait or buffing your team if you put them in a special position. You get three options but every option can be refreshed once so you get three new ones. There's way more than 100 different augments making you able to build different combinations every game. Augments can be silver, gold or plasmatic. Silver is the weakest augment that gives the smallest change to the game. Gold impacts the game a bit more and plasmatic, well let's just say some games can get a bit more chaotic. Everyone gets the same rank of augment, so if you get a gold augment, so does everyone else. If you have no idea what you should pick, a rule of thumb is to pick one mentioning the trait that you already are playing or want to play. But you could also just pick a genetic buff so you don't get locked in on playing a specific trait that you don't have units for or items for. After choosing the augment that you think benefits your team or your strategy the best, you will start playing versus other players for the first time. Here your units will battle each other and the winner gets one gold, meanwhile the loser will lose some health. The more units you lose by, the more damage you take. The health loss is not big in the start of the game, but will scale up further into the game. If you end up losing all your health, you are out of the game. If you are playing ranked games, it's relevant to mention that the top 4 players will gain what we call LP. When you get enough LP, you will rank up the ladder and play against better players. The bottom 4 players would lose LP, but be aware that the higher the placement you get, the better. First place will get more than the third and number five will lose less than the one who dies the first. When the PvE round starts you will be level 3. If you have traits active and even have a 2 star unit you have a good chance of winning the next two rounds. But if you want to increase the chance of winning even more you could click the buy XP once to get up in level. Leveling up means that you can put in one more unit on your board and having a bigger chance of securing a few wins. But if you do not see yourself winning, save your goal for later. After 3 PvP rounds, you will get to what's called the first carousel. And that starts at stage 2-4. 9 units with an item component is to choose from. The 2 players with the lowest health will pick first. Then the 2 next players and so on until the 2 players with the most health have picked a unit with a component. You will almost always pick the item over the unit. Since we can handpick what items that we get, but with enough gold, we can pick what units we want. After the carousel, you will get back to your board 
seeing your new component jump off the unit and be ready to be used. If you haven't already started combining components to make items, this might be a good time to do that. Putting two components together on a unit will combine an item. When we want to make items, we have to consider if the item can be useful to us right now and also later in the game. We do not want to make good items for ability power units like previous mentioned Annie. If we want to play units like Caitlyn as a late game carry, who does attack damage? You can right click components to see what items you can build with it. In most cases, we want to build items for carry first. And that means we want to pick components or items that can be built for free items that works well on the carry in the late game. Very often, if your carry is an AP power unit, also called AP carries, like Annie or Ari, you want two AP items and one mana item. Gauntlet is an AP item because it gives your unit AP, but also make your unit's spells able to crit. A mana item could be Shoujin, who gives your unit mana every time it attacks. If your carry is a ranged attack damage, also called AD carry, you want to build three damage items or attack speed items, depending on what AD carry kind of unit it is. Units like Caitlyn want damage, so we build three AD items on her like Infinity Edge. But are we playing units like Jinx, who scales well with attack speed? We also want to build attack speed items, and that could be something like a Rage Blade. We do also have melee carries like Set, who is an AD, but to make sure that Set survives in the frontline, we have to give him a healing item like Bloodthirster to heal him up every time he takes damage. And we could also choose to build something like a Titans, which gives a bit of damage, but also a bit more tankiness than usually. The last item would usually be an AD item or one more Bruiser item, just like Titans. You will find some items are good on more than just one kind of a unit, and some items are similar in their special buff. Red buff is a ranged item that gives anti-heal on enemies, and Sunfire Cape is a tank item with similar effects. So try only to build one of these, since they do not stack. To get more tips like this, you might want to check out my tips and trick guide for set 10 on this channel. After building items for carry, we want to start building tank items for the frontline. If we have two components that are not useful for the carry unit, we might want to consider using it to make an item even before we have three items on the carry. If we try to play the strongest board, we don't want to have unused power. That could be an early sunfire cape from a build in a chainmail. Put that on your tank if none of these components is useful for your carry. A rule of thumb is to never have more than four components unused. Giving your units items make them way stronger and give them a way bigger chance of winning fights or just losing less health on losses. And now back to the game. After the three first rounds, you have to consider if you want to win or lose the two next ones. You see, if you win or lose more rounds in a row, you will start getting what's called a win streak or lose streak. And that gives you extra gold each round. Gold is the only direct resource in TFT and that can be spent for refreshing your shop to get new units. It can be used to buy units that fit your current comp, your comp that you want to use later in the game, getting yourself a two star or three star. Gold can also be spent to buying experience as already mentioned to level up. And again, every time you level up, you can put in one more unit on your board. But leveling up does also give you a bigger chance of seeing higher cost units in the shop. So even if we don't want to get low on health, we can choose to lose a little more health to make your economy better and come back even stronger later in the game. On the other hand, are we winning rounds, we might want to consider going for a win streak. And here we can choose to level up once more to hit level 5, get one more unit in, buy some 2 star units that have synergies, and also combine some components to gain items. I do not recommend to refresh your shop at this point, since it will put you behind on your economy. But if you're not streaking, don't worry, it's not only the way to make gold. We do have a base income of 5 gold every round, and we do also have what's called interest gold based on your current gold. And we will gain more gold every round if you have at least 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 gold. If you have less than 10 gold, you don't get any interest gold. But you will get one extra gold in the start of the next round if you end this round with at least 10 gold. And the same way you get 2 gold the next round if you end this round with 20. And that goes all the way up to 5 gold each round if you have at least 50 gold. 
You do not get more interest gold if you have more than 50, unless you have picked an augment that have changed that for you. After the first 5 PvP rounds, you will end stage 2, once again having a PvE round. Are you new to the game and haven't made any 2 cost students and haven't slammed any items yet, you might want to consider going level 5 if you're not already. Do that before fighting these stone monsters called crocs. You don't want to end up losing health on this round when everyone else is gaining gold, units and components. Stage 3 is what we call the mid game and that starts with a PvP round followed up by round 3-2 where you have your second time to pick an augment. Once again you will pick one. The difference between the second and the third augment compared to number 1 is the first augment that you get is more random. Your second and your last augment will be more in line with what you're already playing. Are you playing an active trait like Guardians? You will have a bigger chance of finding augments that does something to Guardians. So it might be a good idea to already play units from the trait that you want to play later in the game. Round 3-2 is also a general good round to go level 6 and refresh your shop a few times to make your board stronger. At this point you should have a direction on what you want to play by looking at your augments, items and components and units. If you have a lot of components that fits AD comps, you should play for a carry that does AD damage like Jinx, Caitlyn or Samira. What composition you want to play can be hard to decide if you are new. And even if you are more experienced, you probably don't know all of the different combinations. My recommendation is to only pick one comp and play that until you are comfortable. You could also try to learn two different ones and then practice looking at your components and units in the start of the game and by that deciding what comp you will have the most success with. The reason why round 3-2 is a good idea to go level 6 is that you just gained yourself a lot of gold and components from the PvE round and you also have a new augment, meaning you have a big possible spike in your power. Do you not use any of these goods, you might be facing with other players that hit your health a big amount. The most common reason why you wouldn't go level 6 is that you are playing something called a reroll comp and that is all about getting one or more low cost unit to a 3 star. A general guideline would be that you try to lose the first 5 rounds on purpose to get gold from a loose streak. You will not use any gold to level up, doing to the lower level you are the bigger chance you have to find low cost units in your shop. Once you hit 50 gold, you will use all the gold above 50 to refresh your shop and buy the units that you need for the comp. Meanwhile you do this, you probably lose a good amount of health and usually ends up around 70 health after 5 losses. But at the same time, that means you will be the one that picked the first on the carousel. Once you get your carry to 3 star, you probably also are very close to have 3 good items for it. And now you can focus on getting up in levels with a unit that are ready to carry. An example of a reroll comp could be playing Jinx as a carry with 6 guardians in the front line. But if you do not choose to play a reroll comp, you will just go level 6 and stabilize your board with more units, upgrade them to 2 star and use items. But remember, you gain gold from having gold, so by default try to avoid spending it all. The rest of stage 3 is PvP rounds, with a carousel in the middle of the stage. Are you low on health on round 3-5, you might want to consider going level 7 and once again stabilize your board. You will usually use stage 3 to build up your economy, buy some units that fit your comp and make your trades active and upgrade some more 2 star units. Once again, stage 3 will end with a PvP round, meaning you will grab yourself some loot from the orbs. When stage 4 starts, you should check a look at your health and if you're low, you could consider going level 7 and refresh your shop a few times to make your board stronger. After the first round of stage 4, you will pick your third and last augment. Go level 7 if you're not already there and once again make your board stronger. Stage 4 is also the last time that you get components on the carousel and on the PvE rounds. When you get to stage 5, it will be completed items. And that goes on both the carousel and the PvE rounds. In the last PvE round on stage 4, you will get yourself an anvil that you can sell and that opens up an armory or component that you can pick from. When you get to level 5, you get one as well, but this will be with completed items. That also means that you don't want to have two and a half item on your carry or your main tank since you will have a hard time finishing the third item. Do you get to this point without spending too much gold on stabilizing throughout all the stages 
you might be a little low on health, but you do probably also have a strong economy. That means you can play for what called a fast eight. This strategy is that you want to go to level eight as fast as possible to roll for your forecast headliner unit and then play around that unit. If you want to play this strategy from the very start of the game, you want to hit 50 gold as fast as possible to start your economy to snowball, just in the same way as you did with the reroll strat. But here we don't spend any gold on rerolling, but having our mind on getting up in levels. These are the two main strats, but if you don't want to play for any of these strats, you could just play the normal leveling pattern and see what the game gives you. You can by default think level 4 at round 2-1, level 5 at round 2-5, level 6 at 3-2, level 7 at the start of stage 4, and level 8 at the start of stage 5. Getting to level 9 is not something you should focus on much in the start. But can you not make your board stronger by getting more relevant 2-star units? You can go for level 9 to put in one more strong unit. There is also strategies where you go for a very powerful 5 cost headliner unit and that means you have to get to level 9 as fast as possible. But don't always just try to follow these patterns. Try to learn yourself and see what makes sense in your current situation. If you from the start of the game are going to play a specific comp no matter what, you are doing what's called forcing it. And here is some rolling tips for that. Do we want to freestyle a 1 cost unit? We will always try to roll as early as possible in the game but stay above 50 gold as long as possible as we are trying to hit the 3-star units just as mentioned earlier. But you could be a bit sneaky and do a big roll down at round 3-1 just before hitting level 5. That gives us a bigger chance of hitting 1 cost units just before we go up in levels. Are we looking for 2 cost units to 3-star? We usually want to roll at level 6. Do we want to roll for 3 cost 3-star three unit? That should happen at level 7. And we do rarely get a 3 star 4 cost unit, since it's really hard to get and do cost a lot of gold. But does it happen, we likely win the game. The last thing that I want to cover is some general positioning tips, which is very important, it's easy to understand, but it's really hard to master. And if you're still watching, you should consider subscribing, I have tons of guides for you. It is free and you can always change your mind. Where we put our units is super important. And by default, you can always think that the most tanky units should be in the front row. Do we have units that die easier? They should be further back in the back line. Do we have carry units in the front line, like previously mentioned set? You might want to consider putting him in a second row. That means he will not be target the first, but will be able to get into the fight fairly quickly. Sometimes we play against units that focus on the back line. That could be the 5 cost unit Lucian or the 4 cost unit Caitlyn. They try to kill the units furthest away, and that is something that we have to be aware of. And by that, not putting our carry unit all the way in the corner. You can always see who you have a chance of facing in the next round by clicking the other players, and then try to put your units in the best way possible after scouting your possible upcoming enemies. Support units like Seraphine can be placed in the most places in the two backline rows. You could use it for baiting the sniping units like just mentioned, or you can just put it in a row in front of your carry to give them aggro before they are attacking your carry. It's always a great idea to look at what unit's ability does. You might find out that Corky have an anti-heal built in his kit, and that means you can place him in a place where he will hit a unit that heals a lot. You would also see that a unit Vi could reduce enemy's armor, so place her in a place where she will hit the same unit as your AD carry. Frontline units will often be attacked in the side first. Doing too, most players will put their carries in the corners. So do you have units that have abilities that makes them more tanky? They should be in the side. That could be units like Tom Kench. But do you have units that do a big impact, just like Fresh? With an AoE stun, he should be standing in the middle to avoid getting focused down first. Do you have any questions about anything or do you just have some great chips yourself? Don't hold back in the comments. That was all for now. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.